I see some are sitting, some are standing. Can we all please stand? The Lord is merciful and gracious. He is slow to anger. Abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with you. Nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with you according to your sins. Nor punished you according to your iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed your transgressions from you. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. Mm. For he knows our frame. Oh, Jesus. For he knows our frame. He knows what we are made of. He remembers that we are just but dust. You are valuable to God. Marebu shitiri. I say you are valuable to God. He loves you more than he loves anything. <laughs> he is your God. He is your creator. Just the chorus. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your hand of protection. Thank you for your mercies that are new every day. Thank you, Lord, for the favor that we don't deserve, but we get it anyway. You are God. And because you love us, 
we love you more. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, musicians. May the Lord that I serve bless you. Let me take this opportunity to, again today, acknowledge the leadership under which I serve. Uh, Bishop in absentia. And Mama, thank you very much. The elders of the church and the leaders, thank you for the opportunity that I always get. Um, it, is, it is not because of. It is not because of. Uh, it is just grace. So thank you, Mama. Thank you, the bishop, for everything. Luke chapter 15, we're going to read from verse 1. New King James is the translation that we're using today. Uh, once in a while, we will jump to NIV, but for now, we're going to New King James. Luke chapter 15. And we're reading verse 1. The Bible says, Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. In this verse, already we, we are exposed to two groups of people. The tax collectors and the, and the sinners. And we are exposed to them because they are in the presence of Christ Jesus. The Bible says they were in the presence of Jesus, but not only were they in the presence of Jesus, but they drew near to him to hear him. Now, tax collectors, if you, if you want to know who the tax collectors are, you think of yourself with SARS and double that by 10. If you... If you think that you don't like SARS, if you think that you, you, you have beef with SARS, <laughs> imagine if tax collectors of that, of that time were among us today. Because what they would do is, the reason why they were outcasts, the, the reason why they were rejected, the reason why they were not liked by their brothers and sisters it is because these people were working for the oppressor. The oppressor would send them to come to you and get tax from you. Now the government would be saying to them, listen, when you go to Lucaso, say to him, we need 15%. But when they come to you, they take 30%. They are left with, 50, with 15 and they give Caesar 15 so they were disliked because of that and they were called traitors by their brothers and sisters. They were called the betrayers of the people and the betrayers of, pe of God. Because you see, if you betray the children of God, you are betraying God. So they were betrayers and they were traitors. But not only that, they were thieves as well. They were considered as thieves who come and steal the salary of people and go and enrich themselves. So this Jesus, who is the greatest leader, this Jesus, who is the son of God, how then does he allow such people to be in his, in his presence? Why is it that he allows them to even come closer to him, even, even 10 meters from him? It is because he understands the value of people. He understands that they can be sinners, they can be tax collectors, they can be, they can be thieves. But they have value. 
he understands that as a human being, you are valuable. That is why today's message is titled, You Are Valuable. So they are, they are in the presence of God and they are with sinners there. But not only are they with sinners in the presence of God, not only is Jesus allowing them to be in his presence, but Jesus is allowing them to draw near to him. <laughs> you can be in the presence of God, in the presence of Jesus, and not draw near to him. I'll prove it to you later. You, you can be in the house of worship, and people are worshiping this God, and all you're doing is looking around and pointing mistakes. You can be in the presence of the Holy Spirit and we are down on our knees and we are praying and we, we, we are laying our hearts to this God and all you see is people are acting. Am I talking to someone? I'm glad I am. I'm glad you are in this house. So, Jesus allows them to draw near to him. And the Bible says they drew near to Jesus to do what? To hear him. When you go to the book of James, chapter 4, you'll realize what is drawing near to Jesus is. James 4, verse 8a. The Bible says, come near to God and he will come near to you. <laughs> now, once you come near to God, he comes near to you. He, he is not a God who, who is moody that even when you chase him, he keeps running. <laughs> you come to him, he comes to you. That is the God that we serve. And then this is the God who decided that not only these people who are tax collectors, but the sinners as well, they are in his vicinity. And they come closer to him. There's a group of people in the book of Acts who because of them coming closer to Jesus, drawing near to Jesus, the situation that they were in that was supposed to define who they were did not. And these people we find in the book of Acts chapter 4. Let's go there, please. Acts 4 verse 13. And I'm reading from NIV. The Bible says, When they saw the courage of Peter and John, let me give you a background quickly. So Peter and John meet a crippled person. They heal a crippled person. And now they are called by the elders to come and account. Why did you heal this man? Elders. Why did you heal this man in this name, the name of Jesus? <laughs> and Peter stands up with courage and he explains to them why they did that. And now we meet them in this verse. When they saw, talking about the elders, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, so that's the situation that they were in. They found themselves unschooled. They found themselves without education. They found themselves just ordinary people. And you would think that if you are unschooled, if you don't have a degree, if you don't have a PhD, and you're talking to people with PhDs, you will 
talk like this. But they show courage. And then they realize something. These people, the Bible says, and they realize that they were unschooled, ordinary men. They were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. The value that they got, the courage that they got, the, the dignity that they got, they got because they drew near to Jesus and they had been with Jesus. So Jesus is a leader who decides these people are very, very valuable. Therefore, I will allow them to come. So they drew, they drew near to Jesus to do what? To hear him. Hearing God is very important in the economy of God. You cannot draw near to Jesus and not hear him. It means you are wasting your time if you're going to do that. Hearing God is very important. The primary reason for us to draw near to God is to hear him. Now, a lady by the name of Martha failed to understand this issue. Remember him in the book of Luke? Let's go there and read about him. Luke 10, we're going to read from verse 38 to verse 42. New King James Version is what we are reading. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading from 38 to 42. The Bible says, now, it happened as they went that he, talking about Jesus, entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. So, so far, so good. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But, but, Martha was distracted with much saving. I was talking to, to, to the early service people and I said, anything that distracts you is always uh, less in value than something that it distracts you from. You missed it. Let me say it again. If, if, you, if you are distracted by something, it means you're not supposed to do that thing in the first place because it's distracting you when you're supposed to do a very primary thing that you are supposed to do. So... So when you drive a car, the primary reason for you to drive a car is to be safe on the road. Therefore, if you are driving a car and you take out your, your, your cell phone and you start following Malema on Twitter and liking my man's posts on Facebook, the phone is actually distracting you because it is of less value to the primary thing that you are doing. So, when the Bible says, Mary was sitting and hearing Jesus, but Martha was distracted by serving. It says to me that, although serving is important, but it is less important than sitting on the feet of Jesus. You can be a saving person in the house of the Lord. And knowing God, dololo. Are you hearing me? Pastor Dixon gave a testimony on one, one Wednesday. And he said, when he came in this church for the first time, he was sitting at the back. And God was dealing with him. 
about the things that he was doing back home in, in Kenya. And the things that he was doing back home in Kenya were not bad things. He wasn't sinning. Guess what? He was saving. In fact, he was saving almost more than the people in his church were saving. But God was dealing with him and he was saying, God was saying to him, do not make the same mistakes that you made when you were in Kenya. And he started saying, but God, come on. You know what I was doing there. Surely you understand that I was a servant of the most high God when I was there. And God said, you were just a busybody. Your heart was not in it. So Mary is there doing that which is supposed to be done before what her sister is doing. She is sitting there and she is hearing Jesus, spending time with the Lord, and Martha is distracted by service. I am not saying anything, there's anything wrong with service. Don't get me wrong. I don't want you to go to your leader and say, I don't want to serve anymore. <laughs> I don't want you to do that. <laughs> I don't want you to say, well, the Lord has spoken. I don't want to serve anymore. So, I don't want that. I have nothing against service. In fact, if you have, if you have been in this church for more than a year, you will realize that every time I stand here, I speak about service. Because it's close to my heart. You cannot be in the house of the Lord and not serve. But the most important thing is saving the one that you know. Right. Let's go back to our main scripture, Luke 15. Luke chapter 15, and we are now in verse 2. And the Bible says, And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man received sinners and eats with them. Listen. The tax collectors and the sinners, the Lord allowed them to be in his vicinity, in his, you know, circle, if you like. But that's not the only group that the Lord has allowed to be in his group, in his circle. The other group is the group of the Pharisees and the, and the scribes. Now, these are the, the religious bunch. If tax collectors are sinners, these are the religious bunch. These are the people who have been in church for decades, people who have been in church and they are even part of, they are, they are part of the furniture. They... They know church more than they know God. These are the religious people who when you meet them out there and you, look, I was one of them. <laughs> if you met me before I got born again and you started talking to me about Christ, I would tell you, look, I'm a Methodist. So church comes before Christ. I am not a Christian before I'm a Methodist. <laughs> I'm a Methodist before I'm a Christian. Have you met such? I will tell you, no, I'm a Methodist. I go to Methodist. Therefore, please don't tell me about Christ. Really. Really. So these are the people who are very religious, the Pharisees. They, they, are, they are driven by religion. These are the people who the Bible say they, they have allocated seats in churches. They, they, it's there in the Bible, read your Bible. They, they have allocated seats in churches. They have allocated seats in, even, even when you throw a party, they expect you to give them an allocated seat. It's in the Bible. And, and, and the Bible says they, 
when they are in the marketplace, it means when they are at the mall, they like being greeted. The Pharisees, men of God, men of God, <laughs> men of God. <laughs> very, very religious. And yet, Jesus allows them to be closer to them. Why? Because they are valuable. They are valuable to Jesus. Just as the sinners are, they too are valuable to Jesus. Therefore, Basics, when you go out there and you meet a Methodist person and you say to the Methodist person, can I talk to you about Christ? And the person says, I'm a Methodist. Do not judge the person. Understand that Religion is in this person's system. Therefore, what you do is you pray for that person because he too is valuable to God. So the Pharisees are there. The tax collectors and the sinners are there. The difference between the first group and the second group, the the group of verse 1 and the group of verse 2 is this. The first group, they are in the vicinity of Christ and they decide to draw closer and, dear, and, and, and hear God. The second group, they are in the vicinity of God and what they do is they point fingers. Mistakes. Mistakes. Why do they, why do they wear pants? Why do women wear pants in church? Why, why the hairstyle? Why don't we put, why don't we cover? Why are you in this house? <laughs> so they are there, but they are pointing mistakes. They should have done what the first group did, decide to come close to Jesus, but no, they didn't. Verse 2. We are still in Luke 15. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. Next verse. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, Before we go to the next verse, for the sake of understanding, we, we are going to read an account of a man, you know him very well, he's a, a young rich ruler who was one of the religious people. And we get him in Matthew chapter 19, we get him in Matthew chapter 19. And we're going to read about him. For better understanding, we are going to read this account from different scriptures. The scripture in the book of Matthew and the scripture in the book of Mark. Matthew 19 says, I'm reading from verse 16. The Bible says, now behold, one came and said to him, talking about Jesus, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? What is that one thing that is good that I can do that will give me eternal life? Just give me an advice and I will do it. I will do it because I want to have access to heaven. Let's give it to him. He is better than most of us, the 21st century church. His focus is eternal life. Our focus is bless me. Oh God. His focus is I want to see myself in heaven one day. Our focus is 
I want a person who will teach me seven steps to get a wife. Am I making some, someone repent now? <laughs> so let's give it to him. Eternal life was his focus. He wanted to see himself one day to be in the presence of God, the Father, in heaven. It is very important, ladies and gentlemen, that we understand as the 21st century church that just as heaven is real, hell is real as well. We need to understand that we cannot come to church and do church all willy-nilly and forget that there are people out there who do not, who have never been in the house or in any church. It is therefore our responsibility to go out there and preach the word of God. Because when you, remember when you came in front and you gave your life to Christ and you were so excited that the preacher said to you that now you have access to heaven? Guess what? The people who are out there are candidates for hell because we are not preaching the word. Mm. We are sitting and focusing on what is happening within these four walls, forgetting that once we go out of that door, the first person you meet, and literally, if you are a member of this church, you will know what I'm talking about. The first person that you meet as you go out of that door needs Jesus. We pass them, get in church, sing hallelujahs, go back, pass them, get in our cars, go to our houses, and praise the Lord. Just as heaven is real, hell is real. Let us come to that point, Basaics, to, to that point where we say, I cannot allow my brother to go to hell. You are valuable to God. Guess what? He too is valuable to God. And le listen, God will not come on this earth to do what we're supposed to do. The Bible says the earth he has given to the sons of men. Therefore, he will not come on this earth and start walking on the earth <laughs> and meeting people and evangelizing. I once had a, 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 a story, uh, it's a true story, about Pastor Dominic. That one day when, when, when Jack was still very little, he took Jack to a uh, waterfront and there was a jumping castle. So he says to Jack, Jack, I want you to jump. You see these boys, they are jumping and they are your age. So jump with them. He puts Jack there. Jack stands and he's, he freezes. Pastor Dominic is saying, Jack, these are the boys your age. Jump. <laughs> and he doesn't jump. Pastor Dominic says, let me show you how you do it. He takes Jack, he comes on top of the uh, uh, jumping castle, and it collapses. <laughs> uh. <laughs> do you know why the jumping castle collapsed? It could not take his weight. Do you know why God will not come here physically? The earth will not take his weight. It is therefore our responsibility, Basics, to do what the Lord has said we must do. 
make disciples of people. Let the people experience the love that we experience when we are in church and we sing love songs to Christ. Let these people come and let them experience that. Because just as Jesus decided that the tax collectors are valuable, the sinners are valuable, the Pharisees are valuable, you and I are valuable, them too out there, they are valuable. Am I making sense now? At least I'm starting to make sense. So we can go to, to Luke 15. Jesus decides the tax collectors, the sinners, the Pharisees, the, the scribes, everyone should be where I am. Just in case one of them decides to draw near to me. And the group that, draw, that drew near to him are the people that we never thought they would. And these are the tax collectors and the sinners. The deacons, the elders, the leaders, the intercessors and all that, they decided I don't need to repent. What I need to do is to put order in Jesus' ministry. Let me try to help him and show him you don't eat with sinners. It is my job as, as the Pharisee to give him that direction. But the other one said I want Jesus in my life. Therefore, I will just draw near to him. Luke 15, 3. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one, how many? One. Out of? If he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 and go after one which is lost until he finds it. The, the key word there is lost. The ship that is out there, it is not because it is there because it is disobedient. <laughs> it is because it is lost. My grandfather, when he was still alive, used to own a lot of uh, sheep and cattle. Some of them he gave it to me. Um, don't come see me after church, please. <laughs> so he would, so my parents would take us to, to, to his village when we were growing up. My, my parents would, would take us to his village to go and help him, you know, uh, to be shepherds. And we would go there, and one day it was raining and it was cold. We were, I think I was with my, with my cousins, it was the five of us, and we were around 10, 10 years. So he, he said, take the, the sheep to the field. Now, he could not count, he could not write, he was, the only thing that he could, I was, I was saying, I was talking to, 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 the, to the first service people, and I was saying, the only thing my grandfather could write was his European name. Strange thing. His, his African name he could not write. But he could write his European name. So that's the only thing that he could write. So he could not count. So what he would do is, as we, as we come out of the, as we take the sheep out, he would instruct us, take them one by one, so that I can count them. And we're thinking, how are you going to count? Um, so he would take 
stones, small stones, and put them there. When one goes out, he takes the stone and he puts it there. The second one, the third one. So he leaves them there until we come back. When we come back, he says, take them one by one. Then he does this. <laughs> now you know where I get my intelligence from. Okay. So, so my grandfather would, would count like that, and this, this, this day is raining, and it's very cold. And we come back with the sheep, and he starts counting, and he goes, whoa, there's two or three that are left, that you left. Therefore, go and put on your raincoats. We are 10 years. Go and get them. It's raining. It's cold. We are on our way and we are complaining. It is the sheep's fault that it is. It, it actually, we, we went this way and it went this way. It is the sheep's fault and all that. And he was behind us and he said, no, no, no. It wasn't the sheep's fault. The sheep got lost. He is not concentrating on the uh, sinfulness hmm, of the sheep. He's concentrating on the lostness of the sheep. Oh God. This verse here is not concentrating on the sinfulness of the lost sheep. The key word is lost. It is concentrating on the lostness of the sheep. It is lost. Therefore, it needs help. Please go and get it. The reason why we are here, most of us, is because we are born again. We are the 99. But guess what? Your sister, your brother is out there. And by the way, I know people who are just the, the only thing that drives them to talk about Christ to people is when they share blood with that person. Have you met people like that? He, he feels very awkward to talk to a stranger about Christ. But if, if you say to him, I, all your brothers and sisters, biological brothers and sisters say, yes, I, I, I preach to them. And all, all of them, they gave their lives to Christ. But when it comes to the strangers that we meet, we don't have the heart. It comes back to that thing that when it is family, we, we, cover, we cover each other's back. That is why the bishop always says, have you ever noticed that should it happen that a sister next door where you stay gets pregnant and is not married, the first 50, 50 people who are going to hear about it, you will be the one telling them? <laughs> <laughs> but let it happen inside your house. Your younger sister... No one should know. Some of us are born again. We are the children of God. We know the love that God has given us. We know that we are valuable. There are those in this house, probably you are here for the first time. Maybe someone invited you. Or you were just passing and you decided, let me just go inside and see what's happening. And it happens that this message speaks to you to say, I didn't know that I'm valuable too. But Jesus says you are valuable. You are valuable. He sees the depth of your heart and loves you the same. You are, you are 
you are at that point where you say, I'm sure no one loves me. But I have good news for you. Jesus loves you. And he wants you to come back home. He wants to say to you, look, it is not your fault that you are lost. Come. Come back. Come back. When you read this verse, this, this, uh, uh, the rest of the parable that we read, you realize that the owner of the sheep, he goes and he collects the sheep. And the Bible says he comes back with the sheep smiling and he's happy. And he put the sheep on the shoulder. He doesn't come back with the sheep and say, you have been wasting my time. Let's go back. <laughs> and when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. <laughs> you have not received... Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Right now as I speak, the devil is saying to you, no, fix yourself first before you stand. Come as you are. Come as you are. The reason why he wants you to come as you are is because he wants to fix you himself. If you have never, you don't remember any day ever that you stood and you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Stand up and come. You are valuable. Stand up and come. Jesus wants you. Come. Come. Stand up and come. Don't look at what people are saying or doing. Don't think that people are looking at you. Most of the people, when you look around, they are closing their eyes. Come. Come. Stand up and come. Come and receive this Jesus. Come and make him your Lord and your Savior. Come, please. I'm waiting. Come. He is God, He is your Creator. He knows how to recreate you. Come. Come. The band is going to sing just a short song. And as the band sings, we're all going to stand up and sing with the band. If you feel the nudge, as you stand, walk forward and come and stand here. Lord, make me over. Lord, make me over. Lord, make me Jesus is waiting for you. Make me over again. The Lord is waiting for you. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come. Come. You are valuable to God. Thank you, Jesus. There's still space, there's still space, come. There's enough space in front, come.
have received Christ you remember standing and receiving Christ one day but yet you have given your back to the Lord you are doing things yourself Jesus is not in the picture anymore you are still valuable to him come come to Jesus come Come, he's, he is not the Lord God of a second chance. He's the Lord God of yet another chance. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. Thank you, Jesus. This here is exactly what why we do church. These people here because they are standing here, there's already a party in heaven. Listen, I'm going to lend you my words. You are not praying to me. You are praying to the Lord. You're going to follow my lead as I pray. You pray after me. But listen to what you are saying because you are talking to God. God against listening to the person standing next to you. You are talking to the Lord. Just raise your hands as a surrender of, as, as a symbol of surrender. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am one of the lost. And I thank you that you said to me that I have value as well. Today, Lord, I'm giving my life to you. I am making you my Lord and my Savior. And you, devil, I am not yours anymore. I belong to Jesus. I'm going to pray for you. Lord, these are your children. I pray that you cover them with the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. I pray for grace, Lord, and mercy that those who are doing this for the first time, strengthen them not to come back, to go back. Then those who are doing it again, Father, give them grace because you are a gracious God. We honor you and we glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. On your, on your, on your left, it's Pastor. On your left, my right, it's Pastor Dominic. You know the one who jumped on the castle? That's him. So go with him. So he's going to tell you more about what just happened and what's going to happen in the next step. Is it okay? You can follow him. Thank you very much. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. to 
God. We may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Let the rape God bless you and renew you. Thank you so much. We rejoice for salvation. As Elder Rappi said, there is a great joy in heaven. Amen. Amen. So I'm here for baby dedication. I want to call uh, Katombe Kachunga and Pasi Kachunga to join me on the stage for baby dedication. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is a great joy. It is a great joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Come and join me now. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. because it was done since the times of old. It is biblically based. People were dedicated to, were brought to the temple to be dedicated to the Lord. We know the story of Samuel. We know the story of our Lord Jesus Christ. And even Jesus Christ himself, when he was here on earth, he said, let children come to me. And then we do not baptize children at this age because they have to do it by themselves at the age of accountability. Where they make their own decision to receive Christ as Lord and Savior and then go through the journey of baptism. But as at this age, in agreement with parents, we stand and dedicate them to God. And this is what we do today. So I will ask the church to join me, stretch your hands and speak blessings as I dedicate this child to God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the joy that you have given to the Kachungas family to celebrate yet another addition to their lives. And we are coming in your presence with thanksgiving because you, God, have carried the mother from conception to delivery. And today we are standing to this child, to see this child with our hands. This is a miracle and it is a joy. That's why we stand in thanksgiving. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I dedicate Gabriela Buyamba Kachunga to you today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> 